In the grand mythological traditions of ancient Greece, the pantheon of gods presented compelling narratives about the universe's origins, life's mysteries, and the nature of existence. Among the celebrated figures, Hephaestus emerged as a unique character. As the divine artisan, he was the god of fire, blacksmiths, metalworking, stonemasonry, forges, and the art of sculpture. His story, characterized by physical pain, rejection, perseverance, and artistic triumph, represents an enduring testament to resilience and creativity. The birth of Hephaestus was far from conventional. According to some versions of his myth, he was the son of Zeus, the king of gods, and Hera, his queen. However, other narratives suggested that Hephaestus had no father, and Hera birthed him independently as a response to Zeus giving birth to Athena without her. Regardless of his lineage, Hephaestus's entrance into the world was marred by a poignant tragedy. He was born lame, with a misshapen foot. This imperfection provoked Hera's disgust. Seeking perfection in her offspring, and viewing his deformity as a blight on the divine aesthetics, she hurled him off Mount Olympus, home of the gods. Hephaestus's descent from heaven to earth was a painful one. It's said he fell for an entire day before crashing into the sea. Other versions suggest it was Zeus who tossed him out for taking Hera's side during an argument. Nevertheless, this incident left Hephaestus physically crippled, a characteristic that would deeply influence his destiny and relationships. The crippled Hephaestus, rejected by his own, found solace in the arms of oceanic nymphs. Thetis, a silver-footed sea nymph and future mother of Achilles, and Eurynome, another sea nymph, discovered the cast-out god. They took him to their oceanic cave, far from prying divine eyes, and nurtured him. It was in this isolated realm that Hephaestus found his true calling, the mastery of fire and metallurgy. He built impressive forges beneath the ocean's surface, and, with the anvil and hammer's aid, began to craft wondrous objects. After several years, Hephaestus decided to reconcile with his mother. He sent Hera a magnificent golden throne, ostensibly as a peace offering. However, this throne was a testament to Hephaestus's cunning, for it was a trap. As soon as Hera sat on it, she found herself ensnared by invisible bonds, rendering her immobile. Despite the gods' pleas, Hephaestus refused to free her, insisting that he owned no loyalty to the mother who had abandoned him. It took Dionysus, the god of wine and merriment, to trick him into releasing Hera. He plied Hephaestus with wine, got him drunk, and in that inebriated state, Hephaestus agreed to liberate his mother. In recognising Hephaestus's prodigious skills, Zeus decided to reinstate his divine status. He welcomed him back into Mount Olympus and installed him as the official blacksmith of the gods. Hephaestus was given a magnificent forge, arguably grander than his undersea workshops, and began creating spectacular weapons and tools for the gods. Among his masterpieces were the thunderbolts of Zeus, the arrows of Eros, and the winged helmet and sandals of Hermes. His work, melding beauty and utility, became the gold standard in divine craftsmanship. But, despite his professional triumphs, Hephaestus's personal life was marked by strife. He was married to Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, in a union orchestrated by Zeus to prevent a war of gods over Aphrodite's hand. However, their marriage was fraught with tension. Aphrodite, unfaithful, carried on an affair with Ares, the god of war. The illicit affair between Aphrodite and Ares was a source of considerable distress to Hephaestus. The couple, heedless of Hephaestus's feelings, continued their love affair. The god of the forge decided to confront this issue in his own ingenious way. Utilising his unparalleled craft, he created a net made from bronze, so fine and strong it was invisible to the naked eye and impossible to break. One day, when Aphrodite and Ares were together, Hephaestus threw the net over them, ensnaring them in the act. He then summoned all the gods to witness their disgrace. While some gods pitied Hephaestus, others, such as Apollo and Hermes, expressed their envy at Ares' position. Nevertheless, the spectacle served its purpose, to expose the infidelity of Aphrodite and the disrespect of Ares. This incident, though it brought momentary satisfaction, did little to heal Hephaestus' wounded heart. He found solace in his forge, 
using his personal turmoil as fuel for his creativity. He crafted with such fervour and passion that his workshop's fire occasionally spilled over onto the earth, leading to volcanic eruptions. Hephaestus's personal life wasn't entirely filled with sorrow. He had brief affairs with several goddesses and mortals. The most notable among these was perhaps with Athena, the virgin goddess of wisdom. During a futile attempt to woo her, Hephaestus was unable to contain his passion, and his seed fell onto the earth, impregnating Gaia, the personification of the earth. This union produced a son named Erichthonius, who later became the legendary king of Athens and a great benefactor of its people. Hephaestus also had an affair with a sea nymph named Cabero, with whom he fathered two sons known as the Cabere. These demigods, living on the fertile island of Samothrace, were worshipped as part of a mystery cult that promised protection at sea and offered initiates a path to personal and spiritual enlightenment. Despite the many tribulations he faced, Hephaestus' spirit was never daunted. His life story became a symbol of strength, hope and the transformative power of art. His capacity to shape the hardest of metals echoed his own spirit's resilience, shaping and honing himself amidst the crucible of trials. His relationship with mortals was particularly interesting. Unlike other gods, Hephaestus did not look down upon humans. Instead, he assisted them. Besides giving them the gift of fire with the help of Prometheus, he taught them the art of metalworking, contributing immensely to human civilization's advancement. Many of his mortal offspring, like Periphrates and Palaemonius, were skilled craftsmen carrying on their father's legacy among humans. Towards the end of his life, Hephaestus played a crucial role in the famous Trojan War. When Thetis, his old friend and protector, asked him to forge a new suit of armour for her son Achilles, he readily agreed. The armour he created was a masterpiece, adorned with intricate depictions of the cosmos and human life, exemplifying his extraordinary craftsmanship. The life of Hephaestus serves as a testament to enduring human and divine spirit. His story reveals that even gods, living in the realms of perfection, are not immune to pain and betrayal. However, what truly matters is how one responds to these challenges. Hephaestus transformed his struggles into a source of motivation and created masterpieces that continue to inspire awe, proving that a true artist's spirit can convert even the harshest of life's blows into a masterpiece of resilience and ingenuity. Let his tale inspire you to channel your challenges into masterpieces of resilience and ingenuity. Like, subscribe, and let your creative spirit shine bright. Yours truly, Mythos, the Historian.